Say what's cracking YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Y'all down. Now for those of y'all that's new to my page in 1994, I got arrested. I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life and I served 24 years straight in the California prison system. During those times, I accumulated some good stories and some good knowledge and I'm gonna share some with y'all today. <coughs> Excuse me, if you happen to like the story, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe. Most importantly, hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you will be notified ASAP and you can hop on it whenever you're ready. Also, like I tell y'all, I got some excellent, great content. Go to my YouTube page, go to uh, my playlist, and you will see that I have some of my stories organized into different topics and categories. And I guarantee you're going to find something that you like. <coughs> so, let's hop right up into this video. So, uh... Today we're talking about, somebody had asked me a question. What's the difference between the hole and the shoe? And so I thought I'd also just include a lockdown as well. And so I'm going to break those things down to you today. So first and foremost, let's start with uh, a lockdown and exactly what a lockdown is. A lockdown, of course, is when whatever um, particular institution you might be in, <clears throat> the administration, for whatever reason, de decides to lock the uh, the entire facility down. Sometimes they call it modified program, but pretty much it's where there is no movement. Now, um, a lockdown can occur for a different for a few different reasons. Maybe a police got stabbed. Maybe it was a riot between different racial groups. Maybe it was a riot between. Um, uh, the same racial group, maybe it was some type of disturbance, maybe they have got some type of information that is going to be an attack, <coughs> uh, maybe something that's happened at another prison, which causes them to feel that for the safety and security of that institution, which is something that they always use, <coughs> they need to lock that entire prison down. So, like I stated earlier, when they, when they lock the entire prison down, for the most part, there's no movement. Now, when you are on a lockdown, you and your cellie or whoever you're in the cell with, you guys are pretty much confined to that cell. You're confined to your cell. So when you're in your cell, at least you still have your appliances. You have your TV. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah. You have your TV, your radio, your CD player, your headphones, so on and so forth right now. Depending on... The reason that you guys got locked down, you may or you may not go to chow. You know, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and, <coughs> and this is why I've been going a few days again, you guys. My uh, my cough has kicked back up and it makes it extremely hard for me to talk. But anyway, um, depending on the nature of the reason that you're locked down, you may or you may not go to chow. If there happens to be a riot, let's say between the blacks and the whites, well, what they may do is they may feed the blacks and the Hispanics together. All those all those uh, individuals will be released from their building and they'll go to chow. Uh, and then they'll let the whites go separately or they may just feed everybody in their cell. It just all it just all depends on how uh, how that administration wants to do it. Also, for the most of the time when we're locked down, there is no store. You know, you, you don't. We, we, we're unable to go to the canteen and we're also unable to receive packages. Now, for those who are not familiar what packages are, um, in the California prison system, you get a quarterly package, which is every three months we're allowed to. Uh, when I first came, we were allowed to get a 30 pound box sent in from our families. They would put the things that we wanted into the box and then they would go to the post office and they would mail it. You know, we could get things like hygiene, toothpaste, hair grease. Um, combs, toothbrushes, food, tennis shoes, clothing. Um, somewhere around, I believe, 2003, they stopped allowing our folks and our family to send packages. Then the then the items had to be ordered for from a specific ginger, you know, excuse me, a Pacific vendor. It was also food items we were allowed to get, you know, like rice, um, hydrated beans, uh, soups. Chicken in, the, chicken in the pouch and roast beef in the pouch or the can, so on and so forth, right? And so normally when we're on lockdown, those things are not passed out either. Sometimes they are, though, depending on, um, like I said, the nature of the lockdown. Now, how, how long can we be on lock, those lockdowns? 
it just all depends on whatever reason. You know, if maybe if a guard got stabbed, uh, somebody may have got killed on the yard. You know, I believe the longest lockdown I've probably been on was in Salinas. And that might have been six or seven months. Then I was in Ironwood. <clears throat> and a white dude was killed on the yard. And I can't remember exactly how long we was locked down, but we was locked down for a while too. So it just all depends. Um, now of course, most of the times when we're on lockdown, there's no phones being ran and showers. We will normally get, get a shower every one shower, every three days. So of course, if you wanted to, um, you know, get clean or whatever, you would just have to, uh, Take a shower and take a shower, basically a bird bath in your sink, you know. Now, some people may ask, well, <clears throat> you know, if, if you're staying in a cell with just you and your celly five to six months, you know, how do you how do you survive that? How do you handle that? You know, well, normally people will create them a program or a routine, you know, so you may wake up in the morning, uh, maybe about five or six o'clock in the morning, get up. You know, some people may read. Um, they serve breakfast maybe around 730 or eight. Then a person may work out, exercise for about an hour, bird bath, maybe about 25, 30 minutes, you know, um, then get in his bed, you know, lay up in his bed, read, watch TV. You know, he may have a certain particular program that he likes that comes on or whatever. So, you know, you just it just pretty much, you know, it becomes routine and you just you just adapt to it for the most part. Right now, <clears throat> moving on forward <coughs> now. When they send you to the hole, the hole and the shoe, and the shoe is an acronym for segregated housing unit. Um, the hole and the shoe, for the most part, the buildings are designed exactly the same as the buildings. Um, the design of the buildings are the same as the design of the buildings in general population for the most part. You know, it may be a few things different. So it's not like you're in an actual hole or whatever. You just happen to be in a particular building that they have reserved for people in the hole or the shoe. Now, the difference from the hole and the shoe is, is pretty much the only difference is the, the, the punishment. So when you're in the hole, it's considered you're back there because you're waiting to whatever you have been charged with, whether it's a fight, getting caught with drugs, stabbing, killing somebody, uh, threatening, whatever they send you to the hole for. You're waiting for, when they send you to the hole, they're going to write you up because you broke a rule. So you get a rule infraction. You get a rule infraction report, which is known as a 115. So when you're in the hole, you're just waiting for your 115 to be adjudicated or waiting for that 115 to be heard and ruled upon by a lieutenant. So it just all depends again, once again, what you're in the hole for. You know, sometimes people may stay in the hole one or two years, you know. Um, <clears throat> so how that could work is because if you happen to go to the hole, like say you get charged with a, say you get charged with a stabbing or a drug case. Sometimes depending on what prison you're in and what particular county that prison is in, the district attorney from that county will charge you with a criminal charge and then you'll have to go to the court you have to go to the court in that county and so uh you'll be going back and forth to court as if you had caught your case on the streets and so if you found guilty of course you're going to get more time so say i went to the hole for stabbing somebody on the yard and the district attorney from that county picked up the case what a lot of people would would do is they would put off the hearing they would put off their prison hearing because, of course, if you go to your prison hearing first and you found guilty, then you go to the trial. They're going to use that evidence against you at trial. So a lot of people would postpone their um, their 115 being heard in prison until <clears throat> their matter was solved <clears throat> or resolved <clears throat> on the streets. Right. In, in the street court. And so depending on how long that matter took. You could be sitting in the hole all that time. Now, the bad thing about the hole is you don't have any appliances when you're in the hole. So you don't have your TV, your radio. At some point, they may bring you a few items from your, uh, you know, because once you go to the hole, uh, they'll go get your property. And they may bring you a few items, a few pictures, you know, um, a few things out of your package. I mean, out of your property. But for the most part, you don't have anything in the hole. You know, now when you're in the store. Uh, excuse me, when you're in the hole, you're allowed to go to the store. I think it was like 30 or $45 a month when I was in there. And going to the store in the hole is much different because they open up a lot of your food. They pour them in bags. Um, you, they, they don't allow you anything they figure that you might be able to make a weapon with or harm yourself. So, you know, a lot of your chips, your soups, all that stuff gets poured in the bags. And it's a, uh, a tremendous inconvenience, you know. Um, when you're 
Also, when you're locked down, excuse me, I forgot to mention this, you don't get in the yard. You know, you stay in the cell that whole entire time, right? So the good part about being at least in the hole is you would get to go to the yard. I believe uh, every three times a week they had to take you to the yard and stuff. And uh, you're also self-fed. When you're in the hole, you are definitely self-fed. The food is brought to you, and a lot of times it's cold, you know. And then also uh, you shower every three days as well. Um the bad part about also being in a hole, like I said, they pour all your soups into a bag. You don't have any hot water or anything to heat your soups up with the exception of the hot water that comes out of the soup, um, out of the sink. And for the most part, for the most part, that water is going to be lukewarm at best. So you'll have to let it run for a while, pump it, pump it, hit the nozzle, let it run. Then once it gets as, as hot as you think it's going to get, maybe let it, uh, you put it in your soup. Uh, you can get a little bowl uh, out of the canteen. You can buy a bowl. And you let it sit there for maybe 30, 40 minutes, and hopefully it'll it'll cook, you know. And so that's the bad part about being in the hole, you know. Uh, and you can be sitting in the hole for a long time, you know. Or you can you can just uh, go to the hole, and you may get found guilty of something. And you have to stay in the hole a month or two, uh, then you come back out. It just all depends. The longest I spent in the hole was actually about four. Maybe about four, four and a half months, I got found guilty for participation in a riot. And um, the majority of the time that I was back there, since there was so many people involved in a riot, uh, I sat back there probably about two and a half, three months, just waiting to get the paperwork, waiting to get the actual riot of what they alleged that I'd done. Because it's like I said, when it's a large amount of people, it takes a long time for them to write up everybody and uh, get all the necessary paperwork and stuff like that. So now the shoe... Like I stated earlier, which is known as the segregated housing unit, is pretty much just like the hole. Now, <clears throat> the difference from the shoe in the hole is <clears throat> when you get when you are serving a shoe term, it's pretty much you have been found guilty of some type of infraction uh, on the yard, and they have sentenced you to a to a shoe term, which is, of course, segregating housing. They're segregating you from the rest of the prison population, right? And so, once again, that could be for drugs, that could be for stabbing somebody, being found with a weapon, threatening staff, participating in uh, certain act activities that are deemed illegal, so on and so forth. Now, uh, the good part, at least, if you're going to go to the hole or the shoe, uh, the good part about being given a shoe term is, at least you are allowed to have your appliances, or you're allowed to have either your TV or your radio, either or, right? And of course, most people are going to choose their TV. You know, after you get to the hole, you go see the committee and they uh, say, okay, this guy is here. He has a 16 month shoot to serve. He has a, you know, he has a two year shoot to serve or whatever. Um, of course, now when you're in the shoot, you're, you're self fed as well. Um, and if I didn't mention earlier, when you're in the hole, there, you don't get no phone, you know, when you're no phone calls and you don't get any phone calls when you're, when you're in the shoe. So if you're sitting up in the shoe for 48 months or whatever, um, that's 48 months that you're not going to be on the phone. So hopefully you have family that's going to write and communicate with you, because if you don't, then, you know, you're not going to hear from nobody. Um, now, when you're when you're doing a shoe term, I believe you go to the yard three times a week as well. You know, like I said, the longest shoe term I ever served was that participation in that riot. So um, I haven't been in, in 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 the shoe for an extensive amount of time as a lot of other people have. Right um, now, uh, up until maybe about 2016 or 17, uh, you can have a person, you can have an individual sitting in the shoe, literally. 30, 40 years, you know, they would give a person what is known as a indeterminate shoe at times if they felt that you was part of a prison gang. So now a prison gang is a prison gang is different from a street gang like the Crips and the Bloods, right? A prison gang is a gang that started and focuses and primarily operates in prison or in, initially at least it started in prison and it's more recognized as um I don't want to say a disruptive group. A disruptive group is 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 um like the Crips or the Bloods or something. It's more of a they feel it's a major threat to their institution, right? And so um that's why they don't like the prison gangs. Um and so if you happen to be if they happen to find you um 
that you're a member of a prison gang, like I said, you could be in the shoe 10 years, you could be in the shoe 15, 20 years, right? They'll give you an indeterminate shoe. Uh, they no longer can do that uh, as a result of a um, lawsuit that was filed, I believe like in 2011 or 12, and then it was finally decided on and heard, and that's when they released all those guys from the shoe, right? So, um, now before they done that though, you know, if you were, say they believe that you were a part of a, uh, of a certain prison gang, right? So you might have four years to do. You do your four years. I'm talking about four years on your entire prison, prison sentence. You do your four years, <clears throat> you get out. You go out, you stay out maybe a year and a half. You, you don't get off parole or you do get off parole. You come back, you would immediately be placed in the shoe again. Even though you have done nothing this time on this, um, on this crime or this, this, you know, this case that you're doing time for now. But if you, you had ever got a shoe, then it was going to always be an indeterminate. If you had ever got an indeterminate shoe for being in a prison gang, each time you return, you would immediately be placed back in the hole, regardless of, like I said, you know, you was given an indeterminate shoe on your last prison term. So yeah, things was definitely, things was definitely a little uh, unfair, which is of course, I'm assuming why eventually when those guys in Pelican Bay had filed that lawsuit pertaining to them being in the in the hole uh, indeterminately. And um, it was ruled on that there was cruel and unusual punishment, right? Oddly enough, right, um, the few times that I have seen people commit suicide while I was locked up in prison is, or the only time that I've seen people commit suicide when I was in prison um, is when, when people were in the hole, you know. Um, being in the hole or being in the shoe, for some guys, mentally, it's extremely rough because you have very limited contact with with other people, right? Um, a lot of times when you're in the hole or the shoe, um, you're in the hole solo. You know, you don't have a cellmate. You know, sometimes people will want a cellmate uh, every now and then if the if the prison happens to if the hole or the shoe happen to get particularly crowded, then sometimes they may come around and and pretty much force you to take a uh, a cellmate. But a lot of times. Uh, you know, you'd have people in there in the cells by themselves. And some people couldn't take that solitude, you know, not being able to have human contact, human human conversation. And like I say that uh the two people that that uh I was I was in the hole with when they committed suicide, both of them were not lifers. You know, that was strange. One dude was going home in maybe about twelve months, you know, and so it's just it's just a lot going on when you're in the hole. Or you're in the shoe, you know, you're sitting in there with your thoughts and your thoughts alone. And like I said, some people can't handle that solitude. You know, some people need, they need to, the stimulation of other people. So anyway, uh, that's just a basic breakdown of the differences between being on lockdown, being in the hole, and being in the shoe. Anyway, you already know who it is. It's your boy, 16 to life. Resume normal program.